All right, trigger warning part two, here we go. Hey Forum, Manny back here with another video on the Cascade Sense Fragrance Station and this one is going to be another tier list, this time on niche fragrances. And before you continue on with this video, if you've yet to see my designer fragrances brands tier list, I'll leave that link in the description below. More information on how a tier list works there too, in case you don't already know of what this kind of video is. So yeah, I hope you check that out if you haven't yet already. That being said, as far as this tier list, of course, as always, 500 likes and a random subscriber in the comments below will be the lucky recipient of an assorted niche fragrance sample pack so again to be eligible please comment subscribe and like as always however here we go again trigger warning part two and just so you know i'm going to try to be as concise as possible for some of these mainstream brands niche wise so i really don't want to judge the indie stuff too much because there's a lot of prominent indie stuff that i've yet to get my nose on so i kind of want to keep this list restricted to stuff that just about every metropolitan area within the western world has access to so you know your creeds your bonds your marley's your joma loans, that kind of stuff. So without further ado, we might as well get to this shit, starting with the F tier. Here we go. And good lord, this is already going to trigger people. I know this. We're going to start off with bond number nine, or at the end of the day, high $200 worth for a clone that is arguably sometimes not as good as the original. More smoke and mirrors that you're paying into as far as the visual presentation and whatnot. If you ask me, that's why bond number nine is F tier. Next up, we have Clive Christian. Oh my gosh. Now for a brand that's supposed to be the ultimate rich guy fragrance, their best-selling fragrance fragrance is a Tuscan leather clone that isn't even as good as Tuscan leather. And if you want to feel like the ultimate magnanimous rich guy on the mainstream niche level, I'd still say that Raja Parfums is better than this brand. Like in just about every genre that Clive Christian covers, I feel like there's a Raja I'd rather have. And I'm not even that big a fan of Raja. I just think what they do as far as servicing that one percenter market, I think they just do way better than Clive. So much better that that's why I put Clive Christian in F tier. So sorry to all the Clive Christian fanboys, all 10 of you. Next up, moving on on to Joe Malone, who I know has thousands of fans out there in the world. I'm probably going to get destroyed by a lot of you people in the makeup community who I know loves this shit. But any brand who has reps come up to me and try to argue that you should layer this and that and that just screw off. Of course, we know why that is. They're just trying to move more product. A lot of these fragrances are super light when I feel like some of them don't have to be just so they can just move more bottles. They are really pleasant, don't get me wrong. I do respect her cult of personality, don't get me wrong. But I do need a little bit more bite behind some of these minimalist fragrances. Most of the Joe Malones I like last no more than two hours, so that's why they get an F. Moving on to the E tier, here we go. Not a lot here, just Montel. And Montel likes to do ouds at an accessible price point. Uh, we, for the most part, know that along with anything that is just intense as far as incense or smoke or just big performing fragrances in general. I'm just not the clientele for Montel remotely, so that's why they wind up in E tier for me. That and more often than not, I like their performance more than their fragrances. So for me, I'm kind of a smells first guy rather than performance. I'm not like one of those guys who go onto fragrance forums and ask people, which fragrance do you like has really big performance? No disrespect to any of those guys, but if that's the kind of person you are or the society that you're in, more power to to you. I appreciate the fact that you like fragrance a lot. But just for me personally in my society, I'm not looking to just overpower people. So real talk, I'm not a fan of Montel. That's why they're in E tier. Moving on to D tier now though, and here's the first stack here. We're gonna start off with Aqua de Parma. The brown line's dope, blue Mediterranean line's dope, but the reason they wind up on this list is because for the genres that they cover, I feel like there's other fragrances from other brands that more often than not just move me on an emotional level more. I do like how they try to promote that Italian pride with some of their citruses. I feel like they're one of the brands who initially started doing that. So for being citrus OGs, that's why they make the D list. Next up on the D list, we also have another citrus OG as of recent in Atelier Cologne. OG of recent, that's probably like the worst oxymoron ever, I'm sorry. But yeah, Atelier Cologne does a really good job as far as the citruses that they try to promote. I like Clementine California, I like Cedra Enivrant, I like Orange Sanguin. But outside of the citrusy stuff, I really can't find stuff that I'm furthermore in love with. As a result, they only make the D tier, but shout outs to that brand. I think it's really cool how I'm starting to see more standalone Atelier Colognes just pop up out of nowhere. Hope that stuff's doing well. I know for a fact in my area, it's doing well amongst Asians who are looking for something alternative to Joe Malone in the minimalist category. So moving on from this minimalist brand to another in D, we have Penhaligons now. And minus the cool bottles from the Portraits collection, I don't know, this brand is just not doing it for me lately. Barring Sartorial, which is still dope, I really just can't get into their fragrances too much on an emotional level. If you're furthermore a barbershop enthusiast, this might be the brand for you, but since I'm not, that's why they're only in 
in D tier. That being said, they're always going to be a brand that I always want to see do well, so I really can't wait to see some of their newer offerings if or when they drop. Next up, we have Mancera, also part of that Montel umbrella. And I definitely like Mancera more than Montel because they definitely try to do stuff outside of Oud for the most part. Some of those fragrances I find really appealing, like Sicily and or Cedra Boise. I just don't have any, so I can't say that they're bottle worth. That's why they are in D tier. And last but not least on D, we have Mimo or Memo. Some really cool, big performing fragrances out there. One of my favorites being La Labella. I just think it's a super fun contemporary sweet rose. Besides that, of course, they're known for their leathers, which a lot of people talk about. And as pleasant as they are for some of those enthusiasts, it's just I'm not enthusiastic about any of them. So for me, that's why they wind up in D tier, but I do like how they're trying to do something different from everyone else right now. But that's about it for D. We're going to move on to the C tier. Here we go. And Diptych is one of those super prolific fragrance houses from back in the day, back in the day, meaning like 35, 40 years ago. That's still going hard right now with some of the offerings that they had back then that are still here and some of their newer offerings. Like I really love the vintage Lotois, for example. Of course, Philosophos is one that comes to mind. Tam Dao more recently as well when you're looking for that kind of coniferous sandalwood. Just really cute, smart, street chic kind of fragrances. And I think Diptyque fills that void really nicely for how many years they've been doing it. So they're definitely C tier for me, minimum. They're one new release all-star from being at least B tier in the near future. Next up, we have a Tile Libre d'Orange, and this is one of those brands that's so hit or miss for me, but I do own a lot of their fragrances. Like, I'm a really big fan of Like This, that's no secret, but of course, I like You or Someone Like You or Remarkable People or the really slutty stuff like Putanda Palace as well. I'm a really big fan of. Love their inspiration. It feels like they're having fun with fragrance and they're not taking themselves too seriously on a magnanimous level like a lot of these other brands do. I appreciate that. That's why they're C tier minimum and kind of like Diptyque, they're one superstar away from being B tier minimum, at least for me. So shout outs to brands like Diptyque and again, Eldo for doing stuff on a mid tier niche level. Moving on in C now though, we have Nasa Motto. And Nasa Motto does really cool stuff out of Holland by Italian perfumer Alessandro Gualtieri. Both of them are based on like contraband drugs, which I think is kind of interesting, which I used to kind of find weird as a Puritan maybe two or three years ago. But I can't help but like some of these fragrances. Come on, like the stuff is actually good. You have pretty good wearable cool weather offerings like Vera Onda, Duro, Pardon. Then you have some experimental stuff like Black Afghano too, which a lot of people like. And maybe if they had a little bit more in the warm weather categories, I'd be more keen on this brand. But since they have more hits than misses, that's why I have to put them in C tier minimum, but they're very close to being B tier for me. Shout out to Nasamoto. And last but not least in C tier, here we go with Serge Luton's. And years ago, this would have been B or A tier minimum, but they really haven't dropped a dope new release in at least four or five years, at least for me. Like I think the last thing I really liked from this brand was from 10 years ago in Fiat on IG. Give me some more of that in my life. Some more experimental, yet very wearable offering Serge. But it hasn't been happening. I don't see it happening in the near future. And I'm still kind of pissed off that they went to the only 100 ml bottle design. So yeah, that's why Serge Luton is in C tier. Moving on to B tier though now, here we go. We're gonna start off with Amouage and it's another brand a number of years ago that could have been ranked higher too. Of course, it's kind of marked by the Interlude Man era and before and whatever came after that because Interlude Man and before it was those brazen, smoky, Middle Eastern style fragrances. But nowadays you have some lighter offerings coming out of them. Lighter, but not totally fresh. Of course, I'm talking Beach Hut Man. Of course, I'm talking Sunshine Man. And I must say that I haven't received that stuff with as much enthusiasm as the previous stuff before. Even the previous stuff before that wasn't completely incensey. I liked more. We're talking Reflection Man. We're talking Lyric Man. So yeah, despite trying to mix it up, which is what the community wanted, I feel like the offerings have been kind of falling flat. But still a great brand overall. That's why they're in B tier. Shoutouts to Amouage. Please don't furthermore formulate your fragrances either. Next up for B, we have Byredo. And people who know me, who know I like this brand, might have thought that I would have ranked this stuff higher. But I'll keep it a buck with you. I'll keep it 100 with you guys. Come on, Byredo hasn't been hot in a number of years. I'd say in the last three years, barring elevator music, I've just not been keen on any of this shit. But if you're looking for those minimalist, street chic, super wearable, signature scent quality fragrances outside of Diptyque, this is probably the brand you'd go with. So for the modernist, fashion forward, urban professional, again, in B tier, here's Byredo. Next up in B now though, we have Killian. Definitely makes the best boozy fragrance overall, of course, with that LVMH lineage that Killian has, being Killian Hennessy out of all people. So my favorites and include Apple Brandy and of course Single Malt. I rank that shit all the time. And despite how many boozy fragrances they do, they kind of do other stuff as well that are kind of low key based on beverages. Like I'm a big fan of Sacred Wood too, for example. But my only issue with the brand is I don't think a lot of this other stuff is very good. That and despite a lot of these B 
being boozy. I think some of them are kind of redundant as far as one person's collection because a lot of these fragrances just kind of channel the same moods and whatnot. So maybe if Killian were to drop a line on fresher cocktails, although they're not really known for that liqueur-wise, I think that would be pretty cool and maybe I'd have more enthusiasm for them as far as higher up on this list. But for now, they're good at what they're good at, more darker, deeper liquors, including fragrance. That's why they're on B. Next up in B tier, we have Maison Francis Kirkjohn. Of course, Francis Kirkjohn is known for his awesome aromatic fresher takes on fragrances. But barring the fresher stuff, he's been getting a lot of notoriety for like some of the Oud line in here, as well as Baccarat Rouge 540. So you have to give him props for either of those. It's just for me, I really don't like a lot of whatever else he has in his line. I feel like there's so many busts in his entire collection that I kind of don't appreciate the really good stuff as much as a result. So since I'm kind of looking at his fragrance collection as a whole, that's why I only put him in B. But I swear if this was more of the better Aqua Universali, Grand Soir, Oud Satin Mood, then yeah, this would be a little higher up. I don't even really personally like BR540, but I understand why people do. So shout outs to the BR540 lounge or whatever y'all call yourselves. Fucking got fragrance gangs in here and shit, holy shit. But oh my gosh, we're going to move on to the next one in the B category. And this is a big one because people are gonna be pissed off when I say what I have to say here, Poffins de Marly. And a lot of people based on crowd reaction alone would like to see Poffins de Marly ranked hella higher here. But some people like myself would rather see them rank lower because of how honor original this shit is. Let's be real, if this stuff isn't a clone verbatim of some recent fragrance releases, they may be at the least half inspired by some of your current fragrance favorites. Not loosely inspired, half inspired. Like I'm talking about Layton, which could be based on like X amount of designer fragrances, or Pegasus, which could be low key based on the women's hypnotic poison, or even Herod, which could be based on tobacco veni and or a lot of tobacco fragrances since. But then you have your more obvious clones, your Ojan, your Galloway, your Meliora, your Dolphin, your Percival, the list goes on, I swear, half of the most talked about fragrances from this brand are clones. So a niche where I think originality is furthermore uh, higher ranked criteria, that's why I think they should be ranked lower. But because of community favoritism and the fact that this stuff gets hella compliments, I have to give it points for that. And as a result, that's why they're in B tier minimum for me. Shout outs to Poffums Barley, I can't believe I'm saying this. And next up, we're gonna move on to the A tier, here we go. Now the Labo, I can't front for him, I think does a lot of that minimalist, modernist stuff, arguably the best when you compare it to maybe Byredo and I guess Diptyque. Like, you know, that kind of consumer is also prone to buying from those kind of brands too. But objectively speaking, I think Lalabo makes the best out of all of them. So we're talking Rose 31, Bergamot 22, Santal 33, and then their exclusives are dope too. We're talking Gaillac 10, Poivre 23. It just, oh, I love this brand so much. They're getting a little egregious with the price point. Oh, what can you do? But they're minimalist and they last. And for me, they're versatile. So there's not a lot for me to hate on here. That's why they make A tier. Next up, we have Raja Parfums. And admittedly, I'm not the biggest fan of this brand. But based on what I see from the grassroots fragrance community and how much they love this brand and people I know directly outside of this community who just love that rich person style of fragrance, that's why I have to give Raja Parfums its due and put it A tier. Like they really do a good job marketing the wise as far as attacking the enthusiast or attacking the super rich guy. So you know what? I have to give fair play to him. And if you take a look at some of their more inexpensive offerings, like a Midsummer Dream, for example, which is of course part of my spring niche list. Yeah, I think they do good stuff on a lower tier niche level too. Still expensive as all hell, but you know, you gotta give them props. Again, Roja Poffos. And last but not least in the A tier, we have one of my favorite brands on this list. It's Zerzhoff. Now, of course, they're friends of this channel, so shout out to Zerzhoff. And it seems regardless of niche price point, they have something for everyone in any genre. Whether you're looking for something fresh like Renaissance or Neo or something that treads fresh, maybe like 40 knots, or maybe you're looking for something that is super dark like in the Oud Stars line, like you're probably gonna find a Zerzhoff that you like. As a result, they have to make A tier for me. Again, the X brand, Zerzhoff. But last but not least, here we go with the S tier. And this is where things might get super triggering for some of y'all. But yes, I do have the balls to rank Creed at S tier. Now it goes without saying, North American Creed prices suck. And it's furthermore bad with our conversion here in Canada. However, on an emotional level, which I feel like niche fragrances are ultimately all about, I can't front. I put more Creed fragrances on and feel better about these fragrances versus most of what's below these other tiers. Like whether it's Millicene, Imperial, 
Cal or Rolfa or Aventus, Silver Mount Water, I know I'm going to feel good in the situation I need to use it in. And barring Aventus variation, I really don't feel like I have hella reformulation issues with anything else. So I have to give Creed props for that. At least that's what I get as far as my own anecdotal experiences. But if you want to call me an idiot or something otherwise in the comments, please do. Again, please don't take this list too seriously. It's just for fun. But again, I really have fun with Creed fragrances, which is why they are S tier. Second last on S tier, here we have Editions de Parfums, Frederick Mao. He kind of views himself as a perfume publisher, which I think is cool. So he's allowing these perfumers to come in and kind of write their own story via olfactory. Most of my favorite offerings as a result are from Edouard Fléchier or Dominique Ropion. So a lot of the guys who do florals at a super high level. Of course, I really like that genre. And if that's a genre for you, as far as the mainstream niche level, then this is the brand for you too. However, they do other genres well as well, like Musk Ravageur or Dries Van Noten, if you're looking for something warm, for example. And and even their fruity aromatic in music for a while last year, which was kind of released to some mixed reactions, I actually preferred myself. So again, it's one of those brands that I feel like a lot of people who are enthused for niche fragrances may find something here that's bottle worthy. And of course, I love them, so that's why Frederick Mel is S tier. And last but not least, arguably the most S tier worthy brand on this list. Of course, we're talking about Guerlain. Shouts to USG, I know he's crazy, but that's still my Canadian dude right there. The real shit, people like him got me furthermore embroiled oiled into this Guerlain lifestyle. Whether it's vintages like Lidge, Samsara, Vega, that kind of stuff, I fuck with it all. Problem is I really can't rank that stuff for a time sensitive tier list. But even despite that, their current offerings are absolutely amazing. So whether it's those current offerings like Louis or whatever is in Les Parisiens, whether it's the female or the men's, I literally connect to a lot of what is there as a result of their quality. So gotta give Guerlain props for that. If not for the variety I mentioned earlier, let's just speak about the Lar et La Matière line. Quite simply, the best vanillas on the mainstream niche level. So yeah, gotta love them. They're too good. Fuck it. They are in S tier for me. And with that being said, I think that about does it for my niche fragrance tier list. Hopefully you enjoyed where I rank these brands. So I would love to know where you guys would rank these brands now in the comment section below. So I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say. And again, like and subscribe if you've yet to already. If you do that, again, you may be the lucky recipient of an assorted niche fragrance sample pack if we do reach 500 likes. So let's actually get to that goal here now, shall we? And yeah, until next time, I think that about does it. So take care for now, Forum. Peace out. Bye. Wear your fragrances.